Hello friends, Buddy here at House of Props. I've been wanting to add another piece to my Mando series collection, and this Praetorian helmet from the Season 3 finale has been percolating in the back of my mind. I think it's not only because the helmet is this bright red, but also because the whole fight sequence was so well choreographed in film, it just looked amazing. And let's face it, the way Mando and Grogu kick the Praetorian asses is pretty cool. While looking for reference material, I stumbled across the amazing free design from Starbug Props, which was so nearly accurate it is perfect for adding to the collection, and I'll put a link to their files below. They provide the helmet as one piece, but I always prefer to split it up to print because there isn't as much waste if anything goes wrong, and it doesn't need as much support material. Come with me and I'll show you how I put it together and finished it, and let's get started. So I ended up splitting the helmet into 11 pieces and printed them on my Elegoo Neptune 3 Pro with a 15% infill and a layer height of 0.15. Now even with a thin layer height like that, I'm going to do an initial sanding before assembling. To start, I use a 90 grit sanding pad on my hand sander and sand against the grain. Now if I can get the camera to come into focus, there we go. You can see that some of the print lines are still visible, so I switch to some 120 grit and sand the pieces again. I'm doing this by hand, but you could switch out sandy pads with a hand sander if you want, but I can only take so much of the vibration it causes, so I switch back and forth. Now we're cooking. The lines are really starting to disappear, so one last sand for right now with some 220 grit, and then I'll assemble it. While I keep sanding, I would really appreciate it if you would click the subscribe button if you haven't already. It's completely free to you, will help this channel grow, and bring you more projects. Plus, if you click the notification bell, you can get notified when new videos come out. Thank you! Everything is sanded at this point, and in the past I've had a few questions as to why I do all the sanding, and why I don't just use an acetone vapor bath to smooth and shine. Well, the fact is, sanding is the best way I have found to smooth and keep the print's integrity. Let me show you what I mean. Now, take this before and after of an owl print, for example. You can see how the vapor has softened the edges of the feathers on the chest, where they aren't as crisp and sharp as before. And with the creases on the head, it has smoothed them to where some of the definition is gone. Another thing I found is when you have areas that are large expanses of flattish areas, the vapor doesn't remove all the visible print lines, and since the vapor is causing the print to basically soften, some sinking or warping can occur. Let's look at another example with this Yoda Buddha. With the before on the left, you can see all the detail, but after the vapor bath, detail in the face isn't as pronounced, and the same is true about the details in the robe folds. And when it comes to the floral motif around the base, it has basically disappeared. So with all that, I think I'll stick to a technique that I know yields satisfying results. When assembling 3D prints, I use two different kinds of glues. First up is E6000, and I squeeze out a few spots onto the surface. E6000 takes longer to cure, so I also use some CA glue, aka super glue. This I squeeze into the spots between the E6000. The reason I use both is the CA glue dries faster, allowing for a more rapid build time, but it tends to be brittle and can potentially crack when the object is being handled over time. So I offset that with the E6000, which is more rubbery and flexible when it dries and will retain its bond. With the glue in place, I align the pieces together and use a couple of drops of zip kicker on the CA glue to cure it in a split second. I always start assembly with the dome of a helmet, and in this case I align and attach one end, and then flip and make sure the other end is aligned before using more zip kicker to cure the CA glue at that end. Then I assemble the other half of the dome and then glue the two halves together the exact same way as I did when attaching the individual pieces. Next came the two rear pieces, and then the two cheek guard pieces. Then I attached the two face shield bottom points, and took great care to make sure that all the edges lined up. Not only the pieces themselves, but also the detail edges as well. Then the nose guard could be attached, and it is still centered, so thankfully there wasn't any warping with the printing or with assembly. I let the E6000 cure overnight, and then proceeded to fill the seams with some glazing and spot putty. I love this stuff and I go through about a tube every couple of weeks, so Umbondo makes a pretty penny off of me. 
To apply it, I use a palette knife. You want to avoid getting this on your skin because it's toxic and overexposure can potentially cause health problems. So I use the knife and really press and smear the putty into the seam. I apply it thick because it will shrink a little as it dries and seams can open up if too thin. So if this happens, it's no big deal. Just apply some more and you're good to go. Once all that is dry, you want to smooth it off as much as possible. And for this, I'm using some 220 grit and I'll use it on my hand sander to speed up the process a little bit. This does make a mess, which is why I put a protective layer down on my workstation and you don't want to breathe this dust in. So make sure you wear a mask and wash your hands when finished sanding or wear gloves. With all that sanded, I'm going to finish up smoothing the helmet. I take some of the spot putty and thin it with some acetone. The ratio is up to you, but some friends and myself have found that a one-to-one -one mixture works really well. And using an old airbrush, I spray the helmet with an even layer. If you don't have an airbrush, you can just as easily apply it with an old paintbrush. That's what I did when I made my Stormtrooper helmet. It took a little longer, but it worked just fine. What this does is it fills in any areas where the print lines may still be visible and helps with some spots that may be a little uneven. After the putty has dried, I smooth it with some 400 grit. Again, this does make a mess, so take precautions. You can see how the putty is filling in these tiny lines that I had no idea were there because you can't feel them, but you'd see them once it's painted. After the entire helmet has been sanded, I apply three coats of a 2-in-1 filler and sandable primer. I'll spray a thin coat, let it dry for 30 minutes, then spray another, wait, and so on. This will begin to prime the helmet for paint and catch any spots where too much putty has been removed. After its third coat, I'll let the helmet cure overnight to make sure it's completely solid and there aren't any spots where the surface is dry but damp underneath. Then I'll sand the surface with the 400 grit sandpaper and this will begin to polish up the surface so we can achieve the super clean shiny look like in the series. After the 400 the helmet is feeling pretty smooth but if we're going to do it let's take it all the way and wet sanding will do that. I began by applying a thin layer of water to a spot and then using some 1000 grit sandpaper I start to polish up the helmet with circular motions. I work in small sections to keep it manageable and the circular motion will help me avoid directional sanding marks. This step does create some residue so wipe that away with a cloth when you're finished. You can see here how the side on the right which has been wet sanded is a lot more smooth looking and shiny compared to the left side of the dome which hasn't yet received the wet sand. Once the entire helmet is wet sanded it feels so silky smooth to the touch and I can't feel any texture or unevenness on the surface. Once I have this feeling, or should I say lack of feeling, the helmet can begin to receive its painting process, which for this one is as easy as they come. I begin by spraying three even coats of a glossy black spray paint, the same way as the 201 primer. The reason for black is because it will provide a nice even base color for the red. If I had used white, it can change the color of the red, making it a little lighter, which means adding more red layers in order to get the correct shade. Now with the layers of black, we can really see how smooth and clean everything is looking. But trying to find the correct hue of red for this helmet was a little tricky. So many of the brands out there had too much yellow in them and they were looking way too orange. But I found this color from Bear at Home Depot and it is bang on. At this point, I'm not sure how many coats it'll take or how thick to apply it, so let's see. So this is what it's looking like after two coats, which means my typical three should be enough. This is some really good paint. It's a little thicker than normal, but I haven't had to worry about any drips or runs because of it. The only thing is, it's really sticky, so I waited two hours before applying the second coat after the first, only because I wanted the paint to cure a little bit before applying another layer. In the end, it did take three coats, and the stickiness disappeared after I let it sit overnight. And I'm thrilled with the shine on this. I mean, look at that. Super happy. And to protect it from scratches and dings, I give it a light spray with some clear gloss coat. Just a light dusting is all that's needed. If you go too thick, it might fuck with the color. Last step is to add the visor. For the visor, I'm using a dark medical face shield and I trace the opening in the helmet and then trace this onto the face shield and cut it out with some scissors, but when I cut it, I left some extra around the edges so there'll be something to attach to. Peel away the protective coating, which is always so satisfying, and make a test fit to make sure everything aligns correctly. Then the visor pieces can be attached using some super glue. 
You could make the visor out of one piece of plastic. I just made mine two to save a little bit of the face shield. Plus, I didn't have a piece big enough to make it one. <laughs> and the Praetorian helmet is complete. I was nervous about this build because the helmet is so pristine and only one color, so there's no room to hide any mistakes or imperfections with aging and weathering. It comes down to sanding and sanding and a little more sanding, but in the end I'm thrilled how smooth and shiny it turned out and I can't wait to add it to the collection. As I mentioned earlier, I'll post a link to Starbucks files below and I hope you enjoyed this build. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, feel free and leave those. Share it with all your friends and family. Subscribe to my channel and I'll catch you on the next one. Have a great day. And remember, if you are building any of my builds or using any of my templates, feel free and tag me at House of Props on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok because I would really like to see your fantastic work. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.